<sighs> what kind of code geass visual novel would this be if we didn't get some hot spring loosh action, am I right? Hey everyone, Zero in here, and thanks to my recent PSP binge, I, for whatever reason, decided to play Code Geass Lost Colors. One of technically four games based on Code Geass, and probably the only important one because aside from Lost Colors, which is a visual novel, as I've mentioned the title, there is Code Geass the DS game that's an RPG, Banjo no Geass Gekijo, which is a board game, minigame bonanza aka Mario Party of all things, and finally Lost Stories, which is a browser game of all things. I have absolutely no interest in any of these, although if anyone wants me to talk about them, sure I can take a quick look at it. Anyways, today's topic is about Code Geass Lost Colors on the PS2 and PSP, although I'll be showing off the PSP version, which means all the videos we're about to see are gonna be in that sweet, sweet 240p. Normally I'd show off the opening, but really it's just a modified version of colors and yeah, I can't show that. So if feel free to watch it online yourself. It's a visual novel based on the anime Code Geass, obviously. Specifically, after episode 8, which follows the original visual novel main character, known as Rai. Although the Japanese readers out there might have noticed that I just renamed him. Rai is an amnesiac who suddenly wakes up at the Ashford Academy, meets Mire, Lelouch, Suzaku, and the rest of the student console, and the story just kind of flows from there. Where Rai quickly gets to know the student console, and then potentially gets embroiled in the conflict between Britannia and the Black Knights. The easy way I can describe Rai is the head writers up there for whoever wrote this thing were like, we know everyone loves Lelouch, so what if we made a main character who is basically Lelouch, except his hair is silver, and everyone at meeting started clapping their hands and was like, that's genius! Yeah, that's- it honestly seems really lazy. Rai has the exact same body type as Lelouch, plays chess as well as Lelouch, is apparently pretty good looking just like Lelouch is, a tactical genius, and even has a Gios power which is pretty much the exact same as the absolute obedience Gios that Lelouch has, except that it is conveyed through sound rather than sight. You later find out that he's even half Britannian royalty, half Japanese because why not, right? It kind of feels pretty half-assed to just have the main character be essentially a recolor of the show's original main character, and that feeling pervades the entirety of this experience. Amnesia is also one of the laziest story devices. I mean, Usually the main point of it is by making the main character not know anything. It gives the writer an excuse for everyone to explain to the main character, and more importantly the player, how the world works. Even with that in mind, I think Lost Color does a very poor job of utilizing it as a story device. Now let me pose a question. Who exactly do you think the target audience for this visual novel is? And I think how Lost Colors chooses to answer that question is the core of the problem I have with this game. I will state first that I am probably in a much more unique position than most playing Lost Colors, because although I kinda know the main pivotal moments that happen in Code Geass because I played Super Robot Wars, and a couple of these games use Code Geass as one of the main plots to follow, I haven't actually watched the show in its entirety, so I'm kind of in a strange position where I'm both a newcomer to the series, yet I have a ton of spoiler knowledge on stuff that happens, and I think Alicia is a pretty cool main character. Most of the terrible resolution anime scenes they show are new to me, but I assume plenty are ripped straight from the show. So first, if we look at Code Geass Lost Colors from the perspective of a complete newcomer to the series, and as someone just here to enjoy a visual novel, then Code Geass Lost Colors is a short and not very good visual novel. Majority of the time is spent just info dumping with the student console and other random characters, whom of which you don't even learn their names, until you suddenly get thrown into whatever route. While there are a ton of characters, no one really gets introduced very well aside from Lelouch, Suzaku, and maybe Kalen if you do the routes. And even then, I barely feel like I learned anything about them that I didn't already know just by staring at their profile picture. Plenty of characters just show up, and then you have one incredibly short and pointless conversation with, and then they just vanish from the game. You meet so many characters like this silver haired guy and this purple haired girl. Where even after the four sentence conversation you have, you don't even know their name by the end of it. You spend about 30 minutes with the Ashford Academy, barely getting to know like the 10 or so characters present there, and then suddenly you're thrown into like the Black Knight Rebellion group or the Britannian Army for whatever reason, which has like 10 more characters, none of which you get more than one conversation worth of dialogue with if you're lucky. Some characters you just 
don't even meet. Key pivotal conflicts in the show are present, but entirely fast forwarded, as if they try to portray it with a 1 5 second animated clip and 5 screenshots. Because they are given so little time to breathe, these conflicts have absolutely zero emotional weight or excitement to them, and it feels like I'm reading someone's really terrible synopsis of like each episode. And look, it's not like you can't show off a really cool fight scene in a visual novel, there are plenty I've done so, but you have to put some actual time and effort into them, and not just Suzaku traps Lelouch, but suddenly he is trapped, and then explosions, and then everyone runs. It might sound like I really sped through those events, but the game shows that in about like, two to three minutes. And I think that's one of the biggest problems right there, because Lost Colors is such a short visual novel, there is no time for literally any character development, fight scenes, or anything. How short you may ask? I went through 3 of the game's routes in about 4 hours and 30 minutes, so I finished the game in about 1 hour and 30 minutes. Now, did I perhaps read a little fast because I like skim reading really bad dialogue? Probably sure, but at best if I had read everything at a fairly normal pace, it would still be like 2 hours, maybe 2 hours and 30 minutes at best per route. The endings to each of these routes are also incredibly abrupt. Like they decided that that was enough material to show off from the anime, so they're just gonna cut it right there. The main character just kind of ejects himself from the story because he suddenly remembers his past and is so traumatized by it that he doesn't want to go on. Like if there was some actual build up in his memory coming back, maybe it would be a little better. But as it stands, it just seems like the main character's memory is like the writer's eject button to end the plot. So yeah, it's not a very good visual novel as a standalone story. So how about if we try to take a look at it from a ridiculously huge fan of the series perspective. Where you already know all the characters, so them barely getting introduced isn't that much of an issue. Even then, I still think it's a terrible visual novel, because it doesn't do enough of what I think is the point of these kind of stories, especially if the target audience is the fans. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what I imagine to be the drawing factor for a fan to play this kind of story is the idea that you play as a new OC that can interact with your favorite characters from the show, and more importantly, change the events of what happened in the original story in a fan fiction sort of way. And if that's what we're looking for, then this game barely does that at all. Most of the time spent interacting with Lelouch, Suzaku, Kala, and C2, and everyone else falls under two categories. Either they are plot dumping the background to Code Geass, or they are making four sentence references to something that happened in the show. I think each route I played, there was less than like 10 to 15 minutes of anything remotely being just a relationship scene with the MC that actually feels like a unique scene for this visual novel, not just, hey look, we know you watched the show, isn't this something similar that happened, wink wink nudge nudge? I mean, come on. As for changing events that happen in the show, basically everything that happens aside from one key scene, which I'll talk about in a bit, occurs just like I did in the anime, as if the main character isn't even there. And from that perspective, what's the point for a fan to watch an incredibly watered down version of a scene from a show they already watched, especially if you aren't going to change anything about it? Spoiler alert for both season 1 of the anime and this game, I don't recommend playing this visual novel in the first place even if you are a fan, but it is really short if so you want to check it out yourself, feel free to skip this section. As I just mentioned, there is one scene in Lost Colors where I think the game starts to tap into an inherently fanfiction nature of this kind of story, and that's the ending, where in both the Black Knight Rebellion and uh, Britannian Army routes, they both conclude at near the end of Season 1, where Euphemia gets accidentally Gios controlled by Lelouch to murder all the Japanese and completely destroy the peace talks that's about to happen. Instead of that happening the way it did in the show, however, the main character busts out his Gios power and orders Yuffie to stop canceling out Lucia's Gios power miraculously and keeping Yuffie alive. With her alive, the story ends on a much happier note with like the Japan being formally recognized and that kind of stuff under Yuffie's row, and either Lelouch and Rai teaming up as the Black Knights recognized as new protectors of Japan, or Rai and Suzaku teaming up and helping Yuffie more directly as one of the Royal Knights. And that right there is what I think the entire visual novel should have been like. We should have seen the main character Suzaku maybe teaming up and fixing the problems, you know, it, with the Britannian government from the inside. Or the main character Lelouch, now with the Black Knights being formally recognized as like a force for Princess Euphemia, what do they do next? A fan of a show comes to this kind of additional visual novel story because they want to experience more of the show they love, a new story that they've never seen before with their choices perhaps changing the fates of the characters they love. 
not to watch an incredibly watered down version of a show they have already seen. While yes, it is pretty cool to see the MC prevent the main tragedy of season 1, that still isn't worth sitting through the absolute ton of nothing that was the rest of the game. Overall, Code Geass Lost Colors is not good. What I think it needed to be was a story where the main character really feels like he's an active participant in the story, rather than just some, like, viewer on the sidelines. Either that, or it should have been a brand new plotline that was a separate side story written exclusively for this visual novel. Instead, what we have here is just an incredibly watered-down version of the actual anime, with most of the time regulated to plot dumping, or trying to reference parts that happen to show with little to no explanation. The little bits of relationship that the player gets to develop with whoever isn't enough to warrant playing the game. Just watch the show if you're interested in Code Geass, and if you desperately need more, go read a fanfiction. It probably does a better job in this game, really. That's all for me. If you enjoyed the content, the like button is down there as always. Subscribe if you want to support the channel. Notification and all buttons are there to keep up to date on when the next video comes out. And my Twitter handle at ZeroNVN, as always, if you want to see what up to in between videos. If enough people are curious about the DS game, tell me down below, I could go check it out, because I heard that there are some New Game Plus stories there that involve like the Black Knights and Suzaku and Ufemia teaming up. So, that sounds a little bit more interesting at least, right? Here are two more of my videos as always, and with that, I'll see you later, till next time.